Uh, anyway, quite a serious topic, Martin, this, because, mm. um, you know, the number of deaths uh, on e-scooters and e-bikes, that is on the rise. Uh, not just deaths, injuries as well. Is this whole conversation now uh, about whether or not these things should be banned. And if you don't have them yet in your town or city, uh, I suspect that they will be making their way soon because it's not a London thing. Yeah. They're in lots of cities already over the UK and growing. Thoughts? Yeah, you get these in Nottingham, um, where, where I'm from, and, and they, they are a menace. First of all, um, they're very easy to, to basically bump start. Um, where I live in, in South East London, I watch school kids every single day. All you do is lift the back wheel up and slam them down and they go without tapping in. They've been used by, by muggers, they've been used by drug runners um, all across town. They're becoming the, the, the mode of transport for petty criminals mm -hmm. who aren't paying a penny into them and then dumping them everywhere. We saw in Cardiff those two lads um, tearing away on, on one of these things and inevitably... It's going to lead to high-speed pursuits and, and carnage. But more than that, um, they've become um, a, a source of, of, of obstruction across pavement. And like I said, they're being used by petty criminals. So you'd ban them outright? Well, you can't ban them outright. But what I would do is stop the hack. So you have to legitimately pay. Why should people who, who legitimately want to use an e-bike to get between uh, their home and, and, a, and a train station be penalised by, by these people who know how to hack it? A bit like your missus. And where there's a will, there's a way. They'll always go for a hack and a shortcut. Um, but I think they are a menace, and they're very easy to de-restrict if you buy one privately. You see these things going faster than a car down a bus lane. Mm. They go faster than buses, 50 miles an hour with potholes. People are on a death wish. They are, mm. My kid nearly got hit by one of the mm. uh, e-bikes the other day, and I thought, God, if that had have hit him, mm. you know, they are so fast, they're so bulky, so heavy. I dread to think what would have happened to my little kid. Uh, luckily, I managed to save the day. I got him out of the way. Uh, anyway, what do you reckon, ban or not? Uh, no, I think. Well, I think the I think the regulation is behind the technology here. It's speeding away, literally and figuratively. Um, we haven't got the types of rules that would mean that you get penalised for some of those behaviours. Uh, we haven't got the uh, the kind of standards you would have to apply if you were driving another form of transport. We were talking about sort of conventional scooters and mopeds earlier on, weren't we? And you have to have a certain set of standards, you have to be a certain age, you have to wear a helmet, you have to... On and on and on. Yeah. And insurance, road tax, you know, so you can be traced. Yeah, and I... Yeah, exactly. And so, I, in, in general, I'm keen for a whole variety of different transport options, and I hope there is a world in which we can have more speed-limited scooters where there's ways that they can be traced and there's more yeah, but... regulation on it. I got in a, um, a black cab the other day and my driver, when I got in, he was fuming. You know, when you can see there's an atmosphere and I was like, are you all right? He yeah. said, no, I'm not all right. And I said, oh, wow, what's going on? He said, some kid on a, um, like a, an electric scooter thing had scratched Actually, all too, yeah, the yeah. side of his cab. Um, anyway, he was quite, you know, he wasn't happy, this fella, to put it mildly. He'd been looking for this kid. And he said to me, even now, while I'm driving, I'm looking for him. I said, well, yeah. what are you going to do if you catch him? He went, you don't want to know, love. And he said, because, he said, the problem is, uh, his car will now be taken off the road because yeah. of licensing. Yeah. He was saying, my car now will have to go into a garage. It'll have to be um, banged out, respread, whatever the technical term is, I don't know. So he will lose wages. Uh, and me and him was talking about the fact that actually, because it's not just e-scooters, it's not just um, these e-bikes. Cyclists, for example, I know you might get upset with me this, but they don't, no one has insurance. No. So you can bang into people, you can scratch things, you can do whatever, and there is just no recourse, there is no comeback. Yeah. I think part of the problem with this is that policymakers have been blindsided by, by the eco-movement. So legislation doesn't apply to, to these e-scooters or, or e-bikes because, hey, it's, it's, it's friendly for the environment. No, but I'm on about actually just a normal cycle. I understand that. Why can you go on a road? And by the way, I, I, people will say, well, you don't even pay any form of road tax or anything to be a cyclist, and I agree with that, actually. Um, but you don't have insurance. There's nothing. No, and, and, and so we have a, a two-tiered system where the motorist is being hemmed into less and less space and being charged more, being fined more, things like ultra-low emission zones, clean air zones coming across the country, um, and then getting speed limits, 20 miles an hour in London, that will go nationwide as well, because they want to fine you more and more. None of these rules apply to scooters or e-bikes or cyclists who can whack into you at their mercy, and you can't do anything about it. I would like to see um, cyclists insured the same as car drivers. Yeah, that's Why what I'm not? saying. That is exactly the point that I am making. How can you have a cycle? Like, when I say cycle, I just mean a normal bicycle. Uh, how can you have one, create accidents, uh, injuries in cases, and not have any recourse? But let, can I, let me just go back to these scooters and e-bikes, though. There's another dimension to this, which is the companies that roll them out. So let me 
make the distinction between you going and buying one for yourself and having your own private one, yeah. and then the companies that are chucking them out on the streets for them people to pick up with the app or get bump started and so on. The, the companies that are behind that, their business model is to flood those streets, and they don't care if that thing ends up being used for nefarious purposes or chucked in a canal or something, which is a common thing. A lot of these companies come from China. In China, there are piles yeah. of bikes that have been discarded. So one of the things that needs to happen here is that policymakers need to be looking at some of those companies whose business model is... They don't care about all this stuff. Some of them don't care about the environment at all either. That's the phrasing they use, but they just want to flood the streets with this stuff. Yeah, and I just as well think, what about blind people? Mm. Because you're going about your business, you might know your route from A to B, I don't know, your house to your work or whatever, where it is you're going. So you're walking from A to B, and then all of a sudden you've just got this massive unexpected obstacle, this bike that's just mm. chucked in front of you. Yeah. I wonder, that must make it getting around really tricky. Mike uh, says, no, Michelle, you shouldn't be trying to ban uh, all of these kind of e-things. It's cars you should be banning, it's them uh, which are causing the accidents. Well, I tell you, actually, um, careful what you wish for, because at this rate, We've just been talking about 20 yeah. miles an hour um, speed limits in Wales. Uh, they were tinkering, talking about 10 miles an hour speed limits. Later on in this programme, we'll be talking about uh, potentially banning domestic flights, which is what they're doing uh, in France. Some people saying they should do that here. So actually, it wouldn't surprise me at some point down the line. Zero miles an start, hour. <laughs> well, yeah, if, so, if well, some people do start this whole notion of trying to ban cars, can you imagine? Well, it's good. It, it is happening. And the reason that, that the motorist is targeted is because we are insured, we are traceable, mm -hmm. we have tax, we can, can we be We are fined, ATMs. Number plate recognition. And so bang, 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 we're paying for all the alternative modes of transport. We're paying for the cycle lanes. We're paying to go slower and slower and get fined. Mm -hmm. And the motorist is the cash cow that's getting milk dry. Exactly. ATMs, that's what I think car drivers have turned into to try and plug... Uh, uh, funding gaps in places, I think it's disgraceful. 